Today we're going through the full review of the Nike Invincible 3. I'm coming up on my 100 mile mark training in the shoes. So today I'm going to give you the pros, I'm going to give you the cons, kind of my final thoughts, and whether I would recommend this running shoe for you or not. Before we hop into it guys, I'm currently doing a full half marathon training prep series where I'm training for a sub 135 half marathon. I'm documenting how I'm running, I'm lifting, I'm fueling these runs and show you everything that I'm doing to achieve my goal of a sub 135 half marathon. So if you're interested in content like that, make sure that you subscribe. And if you find anything helpful in this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me. So we're going to start with the pros of the Nike Invincible 3s. There are some cons that we'll talk about next, but I want to start with the pros first. <laughs> One of the things that I like best about these Nike Invincible 3s is the amount of cushion on these shoes. So these have plenty of cushion and are going to be very good at absorbing shock when you're running. Now with any running shoe, you're going to have a good amount of cushion, but especially on these Nike Invincible 3s, there is a solid amount of cushion that is going to be able to support you and also not break down over time. So this is a shoe that is going to last you a while because of that thick cushioning. So even when you get through the foam, you're going to be able to have support and just be able to run in these shoes for a long time. Like I said, I'm coming up on my 100 mile mark in these shoes, and overall they've been a great training shoe, and I've really enjoyed running in these shoes so far. Another great thing about the Nike Missile 3s is they are lightweight. So, they aren't as lightweight as other specific marathon training shoes that you might see on the market, but these definitely are light on your feet, and they don't feel like you're running with center blocks tied around your feet. That definitely helps with just being able to get some leg turnover and just get your feet moving throughout the run. So overall, the weight of the shoe is a big plus in my opinion. Now to add to that feature, one thing that I also like is that they have the knit design on the top of the shoe here. So just like you would see on like a fly net, it's a very light weight material, and it's going to help where you have a big cushion on the bottom. If you had a heavier material on top here, it would add to the weight of the shoe. So I do like that they added that to where there is a lighter knit fabric on top to where you would see like that on like a Nike fly net or other Nike running shoes that you've seen before with a lighter top design. I also love the color wave that they did with these shoes. There's lots of different colors that you can do. I ended up going with um, this color wave, which is pretty cool. It's got all white. It's got some red orange colors in it. Got some blue and green tints in it. Typically I'm more of like a black gray running shoe or just shoe in general, but I do like that they have different options that you can look both in men's and women's shoes. So that is also cool to where there's not just one standard color or two standard colors. There are lots of different options that you can choose from to just customize your shoe to you. Another great feature of these running shoes that I, I don't know why they don't add these to all running shoes is just a tab at the end of here. Now, when you're using a running shoe, typically you're gonna have it perfectly fit to your foot. And sometimes you do have to kind of cram your foot into the shoe. I always like when they put this tab here at the end where you can pull your heel out and you can get your foot in no problem. You can just slip them right on and you can go. That's something that in my opinion I do enjoy when they put that on there. And I also, when they don't put that on there, I question why they did it in the first place. So just super small addition, but it's very helpful when you're getting your running shoes on, just slip right on you can go. <laughs> Now we're gonna talk about some of the cons of these shoes and there are a couple that I've found and identified, but there are some things that you can do to work around this and minimize it as a con. The first thing that you may have read online is the heel slippage in the heel. Now when they design the shoe, there is a little bit of extra space in the heel and there is a little bit of heel slippage when you run. And what I mean by that is when you go to run, your heel will slightly lift out of the shoe. Now that's something that is gonna be dependent on each person say that you have a little more narrow of a foot, you might experience more of this. If you have a thicker foot, you might experience less of this. But this is something that I would say I have just an average shoe size and average size foot. And I did experience mild heel slippage when running in the shoes from the very first run. One really small thing that you can do to minimize that and almost completely eliminate it is to tie a runner's knot in your shoe. So on the top of your shoe, you have a outside notch. Basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna tie the knot across and it's gonna be able to really cinch everything in and it's gonna keep everything super tight around your heel. There's lots of videos online that you can look on how to tie a runner's knot, but for me, that completely eliminates the problem and that is something that I worried about because the very first run I went on, I had some heel slippage. 
I looked into it a little bit more. I saw that online and that was one of the complaints that I saw was the heel slippage. But for me, Runner's Knot takes care of the issue and I've had no heel slippage since. Another thing that can be taken as a con depending on your, your foot size is just like all Nike shoes, they are gonna be a little narrow. So if you have a thicker foot or even just a wider foot or above average size foot, you're not gonna necessarily love these shoes. You might wanna try them on first, maybe do some walking in them at the store. Don't just blind buy these, especially if you have a wider foot. I would definitely go try these on first and make sure that it's gonna work for you. My wife got the same exact pair of shoes and just after a couple times wearing it on, she realized it was a little too small for her and she had to go out for another shoe. So like I said, just go try it on first, see if it fits for you. If you typically like Nike running shoes, you're gonna like these. One other small thing that I've come across that for me is nothing big, but it's just something that I've noticed. Because of this knit material, when I was running one time with a American flag colored socks, they had some red dyes in them. They'd been washed many times before. I'd, I'd, wear, I'd worn them on runs many times before. Actually had a little bleeding from the sock, from the red color dye, and it got onto the knit part of the top of the shoe. Now it's nothing that changes the functionality of the shoe, but it's something I had never experienced before with a running shoe. Overall, that's more of a running sock issue. So if you're wearing lots of funky colored socks when you're running, just make sure that they're thoroughly washed to avoid any sort of bleeding and running of the dyes in your socks. Overall, these shoes, depending on where you're buying them from, are gonna come in at 160 to $190. And as far as price in a running shoe, one thing that I always say is you wanna buy something that's gonna last. And with this shoe, it is very durable, has very thick cushion, it is very lightweight. It's gonna be able to allow you to do a lot of different runs. So long runs, fast runs. There's a lot of different running situations that you could wear these shoes in. Overall, I do think that the quality is, is justifiable and spending that amount on a running shoe. In my opinion, I would rather spend 150, 180, $200 on one running shoe that's gonna last a while, that I know is gonna get me through my training, is going to support me reaching my goals, rather than buying a pair of running shoes but having to replace it every couple months. So. Overall, I do highly recommend these shoes. I have really enjoyed training them. And these are the shoes that I wear at the Nebraska Half Marathon on April 28th, where I'm aiming for my sub 135 half marathon. This has been my full review of the Nike Invincible 3s. Overall, I highly recommend them, and I recommend that you go check them out. But like I said, make sure that you try them on first and see if they're gonna fit for your shoe and your foot size. If you guys found anything helpful in the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Like I said, I'm posting a full half marathon series where I'm documenting everything that I'm doing to reach my goal of a sub 135 half marathon. I'll actually leave the playlist at the top of the screen here and another video for you to go watch your next. Make sure you guys go check those out and I'll see you guys in the next video.